Which materials are laser safe and which ones are actually dangerous can be a pretty overwhelming topic to navigate, especially if you are new to laser engraving. And so today I'm hoping I can save you some time and some stress by summarizing what I have learned through many hours of research. And so in particular, we're going to cover three main things in this video. First, we'll talk about the most dangerous materials that you should avoid using on your laser. Number two, we'll talk about 12 materials that actually are laser safe, at least sometimes, and more on that later. And number three, we'll talk about the three materials that I think are best for beginners. And as a bonus, I'll also tell you my favorite suppliers for each of those materials. But before we dive into the fun stuff, this video does contain some safety topics, and that means that it's disclaimer time. And so I just want to quickly mention a few things. Although this video is a summary of what I have learned about laser safe materials and materials that are dangerous for laser engraving, I don't know everything. So I will also be providing links to the sources where I learned most of this information from in the video description below. Most notably, I learned a lot from a resource published by the Cleveland Public Library, and another one published by Zometry.com. You can find those again in the description below. Feel free to read them. Please be careful and proceed at your own risk. All right, with that out of the way, let's get right into our list of the most dangerous materials that you should avoid using on your laser. Number one, and possibly the most dangerous of all, is PVC. And this includes vinyl and also PVC-based faux leather. And the reason this is so dangerous is that it can produce chlorine gas, which is extremely toxic. And speaking of leather, you'll also want to avoid any type of leather that contains chromium, which as I understand it is sometimes used in the staining process. But if you really want to do leather working projects on your laser, you still can do that and we'll talk about the safest option in part two of this video. Dangerous material number two is epoxy. And with epoxy, you've got to keep in mind that this is sometimes used with other materials or in other products. So for example, fiberglass sometimes uses epoxy in it and also carbon fiber might have epoxy in it, or even like a finished woodworking project might have epoxy in there. So if something is bound with or coated in epoxy, you want to avoid using that on your laser engraver because it can emit really toxic fumes. Next up is ABS plastic. If you don't know what that is, then I think probably the best example is that ABS plastic is the type of plastic that's used to make Lego bricks. And so if you were thinking about doing a laser engraving project with Lego, then definitely don't do that because it can emit toxic fumes, including cyanide gas. So that's definitely one to avoid as well. You also want to avoid putting any type of treated lumber on your laser. And I think a good way of thinking about this is if you wouldn't put a wood on a campfire because it would release chemicals, then you probably don't want to put it on your laser machine either. And speaking of wood, the next one on the list is wood products that are glued using a cyanoacrylate, not sure if I'm saying that right, adhesive. And as a little bit of a side note on this, it's actually more common to find wood products, for example, some types of plywood or MDF that use a different adhesive that's called phenolic resin. And so phenolic resin is a little bit interesting because it's a kind of a gray area on what people will say regarding whether it is or is not laser safe. Apparently what happens is that when you run this phenolic resin under your laser, it releases formaldehyde, which is not great. According to Zometry, you can do this, but they recommend if you do that you definitely have good extraction and that you also wear a carbon filter mask. And yeah, I know that probably sounds pretty intense, but don't worry if you're looking to do some wood or plywood material on your laser because we're gonna talk more about which ones are safe later in this video. Next up, we have HDPE plastic, which is the plastic used in milk bottles. This is one that just melts really bad and can catch on fire, and so you probably don't wanna mess with that when it comes to your laser. And in a similar vein, polystyrene and polypropylene foam also can melt really bad or catch on fire, and so you probably want to avoid those as well. Another one to avoid is certain types of synthetic rubber that contain chlorine or neoprene, because this again can release uh, really toxic fumes. And that will wrap up our list of the most dangerous materials to avoid. However, I want to briefly mention that this is not a comprehensive list. So there are, of course, other materials that could also be bad to run on your laser. This is just the list that I came up with that seemed like the most common or most dangerous offenders. So with that, let's move on to the next part of the video, which are laser safe materials. First up, and probably the first one you thought of, is that most types of natural, unfinished wood is laser safe. Next up are some types of plywood or glued wood products. So let's go down this rabbit hole for just a moment. According to Zometry, wood that is bonded with polyvinyl acetate, or PVA, is safe to use on a laser. And personally, I use a lot of plywood in my laser business and I buy most of it from Columbia Forest Products through the Home Depot website. And one of the things that I personally like about their plywood is that it is bonded with a soy-based adhesive. 
And just to quote directly what they say about it on the Home Depot website, it says that it's a food grade soy based adhesive that does not emit toxic air contaminants. And just to be clear, in case this appeals to you like it did to me, this is on their Pure Bond plywood products. I'll put a link to this in the description if you want to check out an example of this. And earlier in the video, we talked about wood products that use phenolic resin. And as a reminder, if you run this through your laser, it will release some formaldehyde. But I know that some people do use this on their laser, and according to the resource from Zometry, it seems to suggest that if you take the right safety precautions, like good extraction and wearing a carbon filter mask, that it can be okay to use that type of wood product. But I just wanted to let you know that this is a little bit of a safety gray area, so you can decide for yourself whether or not you wanna use wood products with phenolic resin or not. All right, now climbing out of our little wood product rabbit hole, the next thing on the list is acrylic, which is by far the most popular laser safe plastic. Slate and some other types of natural stone are also really good laser safe materials to use. Next up is glass. And now we've circled all the way back around to leather. So if you wanna do leather working projects on your laser, then the safest option available is real or genuine vegetable tanned leather. Next up is some types of cloth are laser safe. For example, natural cotton would be one example. The biggest thing you want to avoid is any type of faux leather or things that contain PVC. You also want to avoid any type of cloth that is coated or impregnated with plastic. Next up is natural and silicone rubber. Some types of rubber actually are not laser safe as we talked about earlier. And I actually have a new source for this one. It's called Bazon Laser. That's linked in the description below. I couldn't find as much information on my other sources. And so that's a new one that's there also. Next up is plain paper or cardstock or cardboard that is unstained, uncoated, or unprinted is also laser safe. Just keep in mind that this could be a fire risk, so you wanna monitor these closely if you're using them on your laser. Next up is cork, which is also safe to laser cut according to our resource from the Cleveland Public Library. But I just wanna add a little note of my own onto that, and that is that some types of cork are like a manufactured product that also have glue in it. And so I imagine that you probably have some of these same considerations with that compared to what we talked about with plywood already, where you have to consider what's in the adhesive as well. And so it might be the case that not all types of cork or cork products actually are safe. And so just keep that in mind. It's also considered safe to laser engrave anodized aluminum. You're not actually engraving into the aluminum itself in this case, you're actually just vaporizing the anodization. And so you can do that with products that you find pre-made online. So for example, Johnson Plastics Plus is a supplier that I've heard good things about, and you can go on there and buy anodized aluminum products like these little business cards that you can engrave on your laser engraver. So that would be an example there. A similar laser safe material is coated stainless steel. And so a really popular example of this would be a stainless steel uh, tumbler that is coated with this powder coated paint. And so what you would be doing in this case is actually vaporizing the paint to make the engraving. And so of course, if you're doing this, you wanna make sure that the paint that you're vaporizing is safe. And so there's a couple of ways that you could go about this. First, you could just make sure you really thoroughly understand what's in the paint. That would be one way to do it. Or if you wanna make it a little simpler, you could just make sure you're buying from a reputable supplier and you're buying something that is marketed specifically as a laserable or a laser engravable item. For example, if we just stay here on Johnson Plastics Plus website, they have these engravable tumblers here and you can see that it has a little icon here that says specifically that this is laser safe for CO2 lasers. And if you wanna get a little bit nerdy, it's worth mentioning that if you want to start with a plain uncoated stainless steel material that you can actually add your own coating in order to be able to engrave it. So for example, the same tumbler we were just looking at, you can buy it unpowder coated, so just regular stainless steel. But if you go down and look at the fine print, it says here that you need to do a coating with Surmark in order to be able to engrave this. And if you're not familiar with Surmark, it's basically just a coating product that comes basically in a spray paint can that you can put on something that's raw stainless steel like this tumbler in order to be able to engrave it. And again, this is not a comprehensive list, but hopefully this will give you some inspiration to see the types of projects and things that you can work with safely on your laser. And now I'll just briefly highlight Highlight the three materials that I personally think are best for beginners to start with. First up is either natural wood or some types of plywood, as we talked about earlier in this video. And I do use a lot of plywood in my laser business, and I personally like to buy the Columbia Forest Products line of Pure Bond plywood products through the Home Depot website. So that's my favorite supplier for this if you wanna check it out. Next up is acrylic, which is another great material for beginners to use in laser engraving or cutting. I will mention though that if you're using a diode laser that it's a little bit more tricky because some don't work perfectly on a diode laser, but for people using a CO2, 
it usually works out pretty great. And my favorite supplier for this is Houston Acrylic. Third on the list is a personal favorite of mine, and that is Slate. It engraves really nicely. I think it's a good one for beginners to practice engraving with. I've done a lot of photo engraving with it and get a lot of detail out of it. However, I also want to acknowledge that another good one that some other people might recommend would be Genuine Leather because it probably is a bit more versatile than Slate, so I wanted to mention that as well. And by the way, this is actually one video in a full series of videos that I'm making here on YouTube, which is basically a free mini course introducing people to laser engraving. And so if you'd like to learn more, then feel free to check out this, which is the full playlist here that is designed to take people from knowing nothing about laser engraving all the way to being able to finish their first project. And so if that's interesting to you, check it out and I'll see you over there. Bye now.